I've been answering questions about equipment care, and I thought you'd enjoy some highlights from my flight academy. You can safely do this on your own to set things right and keep your gear in working order. If you need to get back in the sky and you're away from the repair shop, you can use these little tapes and curve it like so. And these corners are always worth just taking a round like that so that they don't hook and then lift. Okay. Make sure that you press down all the way around the edge so that there's no chance for dust to come in because that'll start lifting this tape. So get it completely sealed. Make sure there's no puckers in the fabric and you're good to go. That's where it attaches, webbing to webbing, on a loop. If you've got a steerable system, you need to disconnect these and put your steerables onto these shoulder points with some malons. You want to make sure that this isn't twisted before you connect it to the reserve. So run them down with a little bit of tension on so that you're bringing them out without a twist to this point. Don't leave it like that. These are much weaker if they are open. You want to do them up. And these have the habit of actually working themselves loose over time. So make sure that you've got a little pair of pliers and that you take this and you do a quarter turn just to tighten it up so it's not going to loosen. Now the lines only really need to be cleaned if you've dropped it in the sea um, or if you're doing a lot of coastal flying and it's really really salty, crispy, sticky and the lines are getting hard. Then you can dip the lines in that same soapy solution, leave it in there for a minute to soak and then work down the lines with your hands to clean out the salt crystals and go all the way down to the risers. Now the risers you'll be super careful of because you've got things like uh, little metal buckles that can rust. So be very careful, only do the risers if you really feel like they need it, like the risers are particularly stiff from dropping in the sea. Take it off to go and ground handle um, as soon as you've done this job so that you at least get some tension on the lines and you can run around, get some loading on the lines because you don't want to leave the lines wet and then let them dry without some sort of loading close to that time. Um, definitely go out and fly as soon as you can um, to get some stretch in the lines because that's when they sometimes can shrink. I've got everything as I would be flying, including your flying jacket and my flying shoes. So make sure you're using the stuff that you're going to be flying with because that can dramatically change things. If you're wearing slippers and then you put on flying boots, it moves your position. So it's important to be everything as you would fly. Got my instrument on the top here and I'm ready, ready to go. So I've extended them a little bit now. You can see we're getting closer to the right position. Now it's important to do this while your hands are up in the flying position and you're kind of able to get a sense of your balance. This is a sort of floating position that you want to achieve. So your hands are going to be up if you're flying in the brakes and you want to be able to balance here. Can you see I'm not pitch stable here? I'm still, my weight's behind the suspension point. So I need to lengthen that part a little bit more. I'm condensing a lifetime of paragliding experience into one amazing course for you. Get on the leading edge with access to all the latest lessons. There's already over 20 hours of instructional videos focused on helping you progress as a pilot. So you can start the learning right now. This will take your piloting to another level. Come and join my formation on flywithgreg.com. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more like this.